you should see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, super. And then, so I believe we will start. Uh, yeah, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Igor and today I would like to maybe show you uh, how uh, you maybe as a prompt engineer, because especially we will, it will be maybe the most uh, interesting for uh, front-end engineering, uh, how you can deploy uh, single page applications, all right? Uh, why I decided that it could be interesting. Uh, for the last couple of years, I've been conducting a lot of the technical interviews and I noticed that especially front-end engineers, they don't know uh, this part, yeah, uh, that is related to uh, deploying your part. So uh, they know uh, how to, uh, build some fancy uh, forms. Uh, they know how to use Redux, but in terms of how uh, applications can be deployed, uh, there is uh, some gaps here, gap here. Uh, and uh, mostly when I asked about why, uh, they answered that uh, we have uh, some DevOps engineer and uh, it's, uh, it's a responsibility of uh, such uh, person. And my, in my opinion, maybe um, as this, uh, Mm, uh, this vision or maybe approach is not uh, uh, right. And uh, I think that uh, in, uh, software engineers also need uh, to know how to do this. Um, yeah, so I believe it will be interesting for maybe more uh, junior or maybe guys who uh, do not have a huge experience, but maybe some uh, more uh, mm, senior guys also will uh, get some useful information. Okay, uh, let's maybe go to the next. Uh, yeah, short disclaimer, uh, in the next uh, slides, I will use AWS uh, yeah, for uh, some uh, demo purposes, but uh, the, same can be, um, can, the same can be done uh, on Google Cloud or Azure as well, so, uh, yeah. And uh, also I will use Angular application for uh, as a demo app, but uh, yeah, it, it can also be uh, applied for React, uh, Vue, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, then uh, a few words about myself. Uh, I've been working as a software engineer since uh, 2007. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, actually the first application was built on that time, it was built uh, on PHP version four. And one interesting thing that uh, it still work. Uh, yeah. And I have a big experience uh, with the PHP stack. Yeah. And uh, last uh, maybe six or seven years, uh, I, uh, I've been working mostly with the uh, JavaScript stack. Yeah, at Software, I'm four years. Uh, some time ago, I passed the uh, MongoDB certification. And in general, I like uh, reading interesting books, uh, uh, following tech technical trends. Uh, I like uh, football and also ski. Uh, so uh, let's uh, check uh, very briefly this uh, process, how we build our single page application, yeah? So we have uh, maybe software engineer or it could be some CI CD uh, process. Uh, it uh, triggers some build command. Then we have uh, bundler, yeah. Uh, it could be a pack, parcel, or I don't know, any new uh, tool that uh, is uh, on the market. Yeah, it's use uh, source code plus configuration. And as a result, uh, it generates uh, some uh, de deliverable artifact. In our case, it's, it could be some uh, folder, yeah, with uh, a bunch of uh, static files. Uh, yeah, also um, I would like maybe to notice that uh, today I will uh, cover only uh, this uh, uh, version when we have only static files, yeah. Uh, topics that is related maybe applications that also has uh, uh, server-side rendering, yeah, is not covered here. Good, so uh, we know how to build uh, uh, our applications then we need to understand uh, on the br brief level, yeah, how, uh, uh, general web application works. Uh, so, uh, and it's very interesting question, especially on the interviews when you ask someone, can you explain what does it happen when you open your browser and type 
the some google.com yeah and um, the answer could uh, give a lot of uh, information about uh, the person uh, with whom uh, uh, you have this conversation yeah so uh, type uh, some url yeah and uh, after that our browser uh, needs to know uh, where there is that machine in the, in, in the internet and in the network where uh, our application is located. Yeah, so the first step, um, it should uh, get the, 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 that address. Yeah? For that reason, client makes the request to DNS uh, server. Yeah, in general, it's some large distributed database where all uh, in, all uh, uh, information about domains uh, is located yeah and uh, in the response it will give some um, ap address and after that uh, client uh, will make uh, 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 client establish some network uh, connection and uh, send some uh, data yeah uh, good uh, it could be more a little bit more complicated setup when instead of a uh, direct machine, you could have some entry point, yeah? And that entry point also know, knows how uh, to handle your request, yeah? So maybe it could be uh, pro uh, pro such requests should be proxied to some other uh, machines, right? So in general, typically uh, such setups um, is used just for some reliability uh, purposes, yeah? And, uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, at the end, at the end on this uh, machine, uh, we should ha have some process that would uh, uh, handle our incoming request, yeah, and properly respond from them. Uh, typically, uh, for that purposes, uh, such, such processes or such applications, we call it a uh, web server, yeah, and it also very simple, uh, maybe a scenario uh, how it works. Uh, on that the target machine, that uh, process uh, receives uh, incoming requests. Uh, it has some configuration. Based on this configuration, it knows what to do next. Yeah. So if it's uh, some request to that, uh, uh, it should be uh, return some static files, right? Yeah. Maybe uh, from some specific folder. Yeah. Then it will return them. If uh, we need uh, uh, to, or maybe it could be some uh, request to another application, we need to uh, proxy it, yeah? And this API application could be, I don't know, Python, Java, Ruby, PHP, whatever uh, runtime process. Yeah, but typically it's like on a high level, this uh, very, uh, very um, easy, yeah, scenario also that maybe you need to understand on your mind. So uh, to wrap up, uh, we need uh, uh, to build our application. Yeah, we, we have a sources, yeah. Uh, we have a command as a result, we have some deliverable uh, artifact, yeah. Then we need to put, uh, to transfer this deliverable artifact to some machine or maybe some place in the internet, right? And uh, yeah, and also, uh, on, on the destination machine, or maybe on the destination environment, we uh, we need to configure a little bit uh, it, yeah, to uh, properly to be able to properly uh, handle such requests. Yeah, uh, for now there are such uh, common widely used uh, web servers like Nginx, Apache Web Server uh, for Microsoft World, it's uh, IEs. Uh, actually, I don't have a big experience with uh, this Microsoft part, and uh, the new one is like, I don't know, new kind of uh, version for Nginx. Yeah, and actually, I also do not have an ex experience with it, mostly with uh, Nginx and Apache. Apache. Okay, so it's like first maybe part that we need to understand. Yeah, as like as an engineers. Yeah, and uh, well, then let's try to check how we can. Uh, do it. So I have a demo application, yeah. And maybe first uh, approach. Technically, uh, it's not uh, deploying, but 
uh, each time when you develop some application, uh, you already have on your machine web server. Yeah, it's a developed web server. And uh, typically, if you need to share your maybe state with someone, either internet or maybe expose your current state with someone, you can use some uh, tool for that. Uh, uh, there are a bunch of them, but commonly maybe the most uh, well known is like in Jirok, local tunnel. In Jirok, it's executable files that can be downloaded, yeah, from the network and the local tunnel, local tunnel actually also, but it's uh, some npm package. And uh, maybe I, now I will show you how, how it works. Yeah, so uh, I have, as I said, some. Uh, demo application and what demo application I started uh, my local mm, yeah my local and, mm, uh, yeah and uh, now as you see uh, it, it it's running uh, and uh, if I would like to expose it everything that they need to do yeah I need in the separate uh, in the separate uh, uh, Terminal pub uh, run one common. I, as a result, I get uh, two links, yeah, HTTP and HTTPS. And when I open it, yeah, sometimes I could see uh, that it, it's working. Yeah, uh, one uh, comment here. So sometimes uh, this in Jirok uh, generates uh, random, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, host name, right? And sometimes uh, some security tools could uh, block uh, such uh, domains, yeah, or maybe browser could mark or maybe uh, shows you that it's dangerous, yeah. So in general, uh, this approach can be just used for maybe I don't know for some temporary as a temporary solution, but I don't know maybe during the work. Also, yeah, as a, as an option, we can uh, execute. Uh, local tunnel, but actually I just tried to run it and now I'm in office and I believe some internal network uh, tool blocks it. But anyway, yeah, as uh, I believe the idea is clear and uh, even I think uh, most of you uh, already use uh, this uh, approach, right? So uh, when it can be used, uh, yeah, when you just need to, I don't know, share your current status with uh, your other teammates or maybe PMs, other stakeholders, yeah? Because definitely it's not an option for uh, production process. Okay, uh, let's go next. Uh, the next uh, approach, yeah, when you have some uh, remote machine, it could be, I don't know, virtual machine, or it could be dedicated server with some, uh, set up the operating system, yeah, and uh, you need you would like to use it, yeah, uh, for for I don't know for some kind of environment. Every, in, in my uh, in my example, uh, I I will use uh, Ubuntu and uh, some EC2 instance on Amazon, yeah, but it doesn't matter if you uh, have an option to make some if if you have some I don't know maybe Linux-based system, but even uh, operating system on Microsoft. Uh, the idea is the same, yeah? Uh, you need to have some, you need to be able to make a connection with this machine, yeah, through SSH, uh, maybe other protocols. Then you need to install web server on this uh, machine. Then you need to configure it. Then you need to build uh, application locally and just copy uh, sources to destination uh, machine. Also very simple, right? So let's check how it works. So uh, I've already uh, created the uh, EC2 instance and uh, installed um, web server on it, but technically it's uh, uh, several commands, simple commands, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's not covered maybe some advanced more maybe uh, cases, but in general, yeah. It's just two, maybe three simple uh, steps to do. Okay, so. 
Okay, I will miss this one. Yeah, so I sign in into this uh, virtual machine. Yeah, then uh, I will uh, show you that my uh, web server is working. Yeah, as we can see, the status of it is active. Then uh, also, typically, uh, yeah, let's check some maybe basic configuration of uh, uh, this web server. Yeah, so for Nginx, uh, uh, it's located under this etc nginx slash uh, nginx.com file. Yeah, and when we open it, uh, we can see some very basic configuration of it. And for us, the most important, it's uh, the location of the destination folder from which this web server will serve our uh, single page application, yeah? Uh, doo -doo -doo. And as I see here, we do not have, right? Or maybe yeah, it should be some root folder. Okay, no, yeah, but I, I have this uh, include statement, yeah? And all uh, files uh, with uh, .conf uh, extension, also will be applied. So if we go to uh, this one folder, uh, yeah, and uh, I have, yeah, I have uh, basic, very, very simple configuration. Yeah, that say that if uh, all my incoming requests to port 80 should be uh, handled and the uh, uh, and the root folder for this uh, configuration is this one. So uh, yeah, for example, if I would like maybe to change it, I can do it anyway. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the last one, the last one step that we need to do from our local machine, we need to run our build command, right? And also if we would like to, mm -hmm, to, um, yeah, uh, to deploy it locally, uh, we need to, uh, yeah, to use, oh, sorry, uh, this command, uh, yeah. Uh, basically it's uh, SCP, it's like uh, some internal uh, Unix command that could uh, copy your uh, files through uh, SSH, yeah. You just need uh, to configure, you just need to provide uh, some address to your machine and uh, the root folder. Uh, where this application is located. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe let's check. And also as I, yeah, as I said about on the maybe second second slide, yeah, uh, we could uh, uh, have, we can type uh, some uh, host name or URL, yeah, or maybe even we can just specify DIRI for some IP, yeah, it will be uh, handle as well, but uh, in my case, AWS provides uh, some internal public, uh, not internal, some, um, actually, I don't know how to properly uh, say it, but anyway, it provides some uh, uh, DNS name, yeah, uh, for my instance, and if I open it, yeah, we will see that, uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah. So as a result, yeah, we will see that uh, my application, uh, I can see uh, this application, yeah, and I can click on it, I don't know, as I see it works. Yeah, and uh, I believe uh, in terms of uh, this approach, in general, it's also, again, we need to have a web server, we need to know how to edit uh, this configuration there, yeah. And from uh, our, I don't know, from our local machine, from our CI CD, maybe process, yeah. Uh, we need to be able to copy artifacts uh, into, into the destination uh, machine. Yeah, if you have uh, such, uh, uh, such setup, yeah, when you have multiple uh, machines, yeah, so you need uh, to, uh, apply the same command for uh, for uh, all your instances, yeah. And uh, maybe one important moment, that, uh, important moment, but uh, interesting uh, point. So, if, uh, for example, I uh, will use it uh, uh, for a long time, such approach, yeah. Uh, uh, at the end, it could be. 
could be possible when uh, inside of this uh, folder it could be I don't know big bank of uh, garbage yeah because uh, sometimes we can add files we can remove files and uh, to avoid this approach uh, we can for example per each of uh, build yeah inside uh, of maybe this some folder we can create separate uh, uh, subfolders per our build yeah and uh, uh, after we uh, copy our uh, source code, uh, no, this folder, yeah, we need uh, to go to uh, our configuration file, yeah, and uh, maybe change uh, the uh, root uh, destination folder and uh, restart our web server. So, yeah, and, like an option how you can manage uh, your, uh, I don't know, uh, builds per more granularly on destination on uh, destination machine uh yeah when uh, such approach can be used it's a good option for maybe the test uh, stage uh, environments yeah uh, when you don't have uh, when you don't have uh, a big uh, or strict uh, reliability requirements yeah you have one machine yeah and uh, uh, you can use it i don't know in your maybe development process and uh, uh, it could work. Uh, maybe the downsides of this uh, approach, you need to a little bit know uh, some basic Unix commands, yeah, and how uh, this uh, uh, this operational um, part uh, can be uh, can be done. Uh, yeah, and also maybe also the downside of this, yeah, you are responsible for maintaining and upgrading uh, such machines, or maybe yeah, you have <laughs> DevOps guys. That, could do this but in general yeah as you as a software engineer you need at least to understand maybe these basic four steps and i believe this is all and the next maybe option then let's go to the next option uh, next option uh, it could be done with the docker uh, docker uh, is uh, some tool that allows you uh, to isolate your application with all your Mm, with all uh, dependencies for this uh, application yeah on some specific host machine and then that host machine you can uh, execute i don't know several such uh, applications yeah that could potentially have some conflicts between dependencies uh, in our cases uh, what we can do we can uh, include into when what do we need to do we need uh, as a result of this deliverable ar artifact we will have not like folder but some kind of uh, docker image yeah that can be uh, then transferred uh, to the network and in the in in, in the some environment can be uh, used yeah and uh, why it's uh, more maybe um, uh, why, uh, why 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 it's useful but yeah because you just need to uh, transfer one one file i don't know uh, yeah, and uh, everything, and also plus uh, this Docker file also will include our web server. Yeah, as a part of this deliverable artifact. So everything that we need, we need uh, to create such Docker file. Uh, we need to describe some steps. Um, yeah, for build our application, and also yeah, uh, maybe we need to uh, uh, also specify some. Yeah, dependence that we need. In our case, we need a web server. Yeah, and also Docker uh, has uh, provides such option like multi-stage builds. Uh, what does it mean? So uh, you can uh, during this uh, the build process of your image, you can uh, split it into se several steps. First, you, uh, for example, you need to, for for building your application, you need to install some node uh, dependencies a lot. Yeah, but uh, uh, for the executing, you don't need them. So yeah, so you can just uh, run build process and the result of uh, it can be uh, used uh, in, in, in another one. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, and also important one moment. So as we know, so each time when we build our single patch application, technically uh, our configuration um, at the end, it will be our say, configurational values, yeah, values of the configurational options will be a part of our bundle, yeah. So it will be hard coded into into um, 
uh, into this uh, this uh, deliverable artifact. But from say uh, best practices, how to use the containers, um, the research uh, moment. So uh, you uh, all your configuration. So your image uh, should be should not depend on some specific configuration or more or even more specific more properly to say it should not contain some specific uh, configuration values yeah so all configurations should be provided through uh, i don't know some environments variables or maybe any other way how you can pass your configuration and uh, how uh, we can solve it uh, with a uh, single patch application basically uh, yeah, inside of values, we can uh, specify some placeholders for them. And during the start of our Docker container, we need to execute some command that could uh, replace such uh, values, yeah, inside of our maybe GS uh, files. Yeah, and as a result, uh, we could start, uh, we could use one uh, image, yeah, and provide different uh configuration and as a result it will be uh it will have some influence on uh, the behavior of it so uh also how to what, how to do this uh, actually we need to do also four maybe simple steps first we need to build a docker image yeah locally also maybe on ci cd uh, server etc uh, then uh, we need to push our Docker to some uh, registry. In my case, uh, I'm using uh, EKS. EKS is uh, Elastic Container or maybe Elastic Registry Service. Yeah. From, anyway, it's some service that uh, AWS provides. Yeah. Uh, so I need uh, just uh, to uh, mark my. Uh, image with some specific tag and push this uh, image to the registry yeah and on the destination machine i need to pull it and and execute this uh, uh, and execute this command run command and it's all uh, okay maybe and let's check how it works so i also have another aws instance mm -hmm. okay show me Yeah, and uh, previously I said that uh, we also need to uh, install a web server on our say, destination machine. Uh, in this case, instead of web server, because web server will be a part of our Docker container, we need to have a Docker uh, uh, Docker daemon, yeah, Docker installed on our machine. So in my case, I already have some running uh, Docker uh, container, yeah. And uh, I will not show you these uh, commands because I believe it will take uh, some time yeah, to build uh, this uh, image. But in general, I believe uh, yeah, the idea should be clear. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's open maybe uh, this domain name. Okay, as you can see uh, on, on that machine, I have only uh, HTTP connection. Yeah, so my process runs on uh, 480. And yeah, uh, why I cannot see it? Because uh, yeah, we have uh, a no source where we fetch data and sometimes I don't know why it uh, it works with some delay, maybe something. But anyway, yeah, I believe in one to two minutes, not one, several seconds, it should be done something. Uh, anyway, so uh, as you can see here, I have this uh, uh, pass to let's say I would like to fetch a list of products uh, with category electronics, right? So, and now, for example, I, oh, yeah, so yeah, we can see that it returns, uh, it returns some uh, data. And uh, for example, I would like to change the behavior of my uh, application. What do I need to do? I need to stop this container. Uh, okay, I need to stop, I need to provide this. 
ID. And uh, after that, I can, yeah, yeah, I can start uh, my container again, but uh, now, uh, yeah, I will provide uh, a link to, uh, uh, to API endpoint with uh, category Jeverly. And let's try to, uh, okay. Yeah, refresh our page. Yeah, and as I see now, yeah, I mm, fetch, uh, we, we uh, yeah, we are getting uh, data uh, from another source, right? And previously, as you could see, uh, yeah, I uh, I had, uh, when I refreshed my page, I saw uh, some, the same, uh, yeah, uh, Pass, yeah, and because I believe it's due to some uh, catching mechanism. Uh, yeah. uh, how to maybe avoid this uh, problem? Yeah, it's not a part of this uh, maybe topic. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, uh, in, as as we can see now, it works. Uh, good. Uh, let's go back to our uh, to our slides. So yeah. Uh, Again, four simple steps, yeah. Build a Docker image, push to the registry on the destination machine, uh, pull this uh, Docker image and run uh, container. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, it's like very, very simple uh, example, yeah, in real applications or maybe current solutions. Uh, we have some orchestrator uh, tools that, uh, are responsible for that proposals, but under the hood, yeah, the idea is the same. Uh, okay, when it can be used? Uh, in my opinion, uh, if we compare these two approaches, uh, first uh, first point, it's uh, when you all already uh, use uh, Docker, Docker heavily on your, let's say, uh, solution, yeah? And maybe your single page application is not just it could be some one uh, small part uh, of uh, whole your UI, or maybe you have some uh, micro front ends, yeah. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, maybe it's like one uh, of the option. Uh, another one, uh, when you would like uh, to create public, some when you would like to, to build some UI for uh, UI application, yeah. For some, I don't know, for some services, etc., and this uh, application uh, could be distributed uh, publicly. And what what uh, do I mean? So, uh, I don't know. Maybe you used uh, some tools. I don't know. Even for for maybe it's not right uh, example, but anyway, yeah. For PHP, there is a such tool like PHP admin. So it's what it's UI for uh, for uh, MySQL, yeah. But uh, yeah, let, let's imagine that we would like to build only UI part, uh, only UI app. So uh, to uh, for the end user to be able to use such tool, you uh, uh, such user should uh, install uh, the uh, ap application, maybe also install uh, some dependency for it. So in general, it's some uh, it requires to follow some manual, yeah. But uh, with Docker, you can just uh, execute one command. You can just Docker run uh, your uh, name of your uh, can, uh, Docker image. Yeah, and it uh, will do everything under the hood. Uh, yeah, it's also a good very option when you would like to uh, use the same artifact for different uh, environments. Yeah, it's especially it's critical uh, yeah, when you um, have uh, I don't know, very well defined your develop, development process, yeah? And first you, uh, I don't know, uh, you have maybe some stage environment where you test it and you see, you, you see that everything is okay. After that, the, the same artifact, but with maybe different configuration can be uh, retested by some QI, QA, uh, QC, uh, team, yeah? And after that, the same uh, artifact will be deployed. Yeah, because uh, um, previously uh, with uh, on the first example, yeah, uh, we uh, during the build process, yeah, we uh, 
if we if we if we uh, hard coded our values inside of uh, our bundle, yeah, it could be probably it could be a place where you can have some different behaviors depends on uh, your uh, build uh, comments, etc. And also, it's a good approach uh, uh, to do such uh, do such uh, canary or blue green deployment, but it's more related. Uh, maybe it's, uh, you need to have some orchestration tools and uh, it should be done on that level. And the uh, downsides of it, of course, uh, it's uh, also some uh, ops knowledge are required, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, mm, there are some maybe operational or infrastructure costs. Of, you need to have some private registry, you need to manage such access permissions properly to that, et cetera. But uh, I believe it's also, uh, should be clear. Uh, okay, so uh, what if I don't want to know uh, everything, all this, uh, I don't know, uh, operational stuff, so I don't want to uh, know how to install uh, Nginx on some Linux server, yeah, or maybe don't want to manage, uh, don't, don't want to be responsible for uh, um, supporting or maintain, maintenance of that. Uh, and for that purposes, uh, there are services that could handle everything, uh, uh, could ha handle everything. Yeah, and uh, also they are well known. Yeah, we, I mentioned here only maybe three of them, but there are many more. And for now, the most uh, well known is like Heroku, right? Netlify and Verso. Um, Basically, the idea is uh, very simple. Yeah, we just need to create an account in that uh, service. Yeah, and uh, that uh, service provides some platform where you can just put your uh, artifacts, and that's all. Everything that you need, you just need to build that uh, artifact. Uh, so let's maybe check how it works uh, uh, with Netlify. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Actually, it's super very simple, uh, maybe two or three steps. So we need to uh, create an account, right? So in my case, this is some free account. Of course, they have some uh, some payment uh, plans for that. Yeah, uh, and what do I need to do? I need to, to have, in this case, uh, my... Uh, my sources in some repo, in this case, it could be GitHub. I need to connect this repo with my uh, uh, account. And uh, after that, and just uh, uh, set up some small uh, configuration for it and it's all and everything, <laughs> um, everything will uh, do next. Everything will be covered next by um, this uh, service. Actually, I already created it, but maybe we can, I don't know, we can do the, actually, actually, maybe your side is, anyway, uh, let's imagine that I already have it, yeah. So as a result, I also have this uh, um, domain name, yeah, it's um, automatically generated by Netlify. Uh, you can uh, connect your, some custom domain here, sorry. It's, Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, here, for example, yeah. If we have our own domain, we can connect to it. But yeah, I will not. Uh, uh, I will not cover it here. Uh, well, I will show you one interesting uh, maybe feature here. Yeah. So okay. Uh, yeah, as I said, everything that we need, we need to connect our repo. Yeah and specify some uh, very simple command, some command, uh, build command, and uh, um, maybe pass to some destination folder and so on. And uh, after that, yeah, you can specify which uh, branches will be used uh, for uh, deploying and uh, deploying. And each time when you will make any changes uh, to that, uh, uh, to your uh, in, into in your source code, yeah, it will automatically trigger uh, this uh, building process. And maybe even let's check how to do this. So uh, yeah, so I have one branch for it, and even I don't remember where. 
Uh, oh yes, yeah, this one, this file. Yeah, I made some change here. So let's maybe add. Okay, so I made, uh, I committed my changes and I will push the changes to my repo. Um, yeah, as you can see, it should be, oh, it should not slide. Yeah. Uh, so I see a new commit here, right? And uh, this service will will be notified about new 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 changes. Actually, I don't remember where. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, or maybe this one. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, here. Uh, so as you can see, it uh, automatically triggered uh, a building process. Yeah, and if we go to here uh, to you know, to details, basically should be details here. Uh, yeah, we can see uh, some uh, outcomes. Uh, builds build process successfully and even I should have uh, a direct link yeah direct link uh, to this uh, latest version yeah uh, yeah as you can see it automatically generates some um, uh, domain name by some pattern yeah when we have application name and also uh, the name of our branch. Also, one interesting uh, feature of let's say this uh, uh, service uh, it allows you to apply some A/B testing. Yeah, so uh, you can specify uh, several branches, uh, and you can uh, turn on this uh, maybe uh, A/B test experiment. Yeah, and uh, as a result, automatically. Yeah, so I need to have one branch I, I can, uh, yeah, I should have maybe another branch, yeah. Then we can uh, have different changes into the into these two, two branches. And as a result, from out of the box, uh, we have this feature, yeah. The, yeah, as you can see, now I don't see that uh, changes from, uh, branch test a yeah and now yeah if i open it again yeah i can see yeah so uh very interesting one so yeah i don't i i didn't configure anything yeah i just created an account and that's all and in this case i don't need to think about dockers uh, web servers etc yeah uh, yeah when it can be used in my opinion, uh, yeah, as I said, if you don't want to think about any kind of op operational stuff, you don't want to uh, be responsible for managing infrastructure, etc. Uh, also, it's a good option, for example, if you have some uh, reliability requirements, right? Because it's a responsibility for this platform to manage it. Uh, as I show you, yeah, such uh, platforms uh, provide some interesting features like A-B testing from out of the box. And uh, it could be very useful for uh, some personal projects or maybe some experimental projects, right? So when you can, uh, I don't know, uh, in with uh, less uh, amount of efforts, right? Just uh, have uh, some ready, uh, ready version of your application uh yeah but uh, like a downside i don't know if this is just maybe my opinion yeah so um of course uh, if uh, you don't want to uh, be responsible for uh any operational stuff yeah uh you you need to pay for it and uh, if we go to some pricing uh for this uh, service uh, yeah, um, we can see that, for example, if I have some, I don't know, large team, yeah, and uh, 
um, we if we need that uh, for example many uh, engineer or developers should have access to this build process it could be very expensive because uh, uh, they uh, have these uh, uh, plans like uh, one uh, license per user, so yes, you need to uh, pay. But uh, yeah, it's like maybe a downside. I don't know if we can um, if we can say in that way. Uh, yeah, and uh, maybe the last one, and maybe it's most commonly used now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, when we uh, use uh, some blob storage. Uh, of uh, main, I don't know, cloud providers, yeah, as a source uh, for, uh, as, a, as an option, how we can uh, deploy and serve our application. And in this case, it's also very uh, simple uh, way. So everything that we need to do, we need also need to make four steps. We need to create, uh, in, my, in my example is uh, uh, AWS, so we need to create a new, S3 bucket, yeah. Then we need to uh, change a little bit uh, its uh, configuration, yeah. Uh, and then we need to push uh, our changes into it and the so. So maybe let's check how we can do this. Uh, how we can do this? Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, so uh, I all I already created this uh, bucket. Uh, then uh, after we have a new bucket, maybe even I will show you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need uh, to allow uh, public access to this bucket. Uh, da, 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 advanced settings, maybe, maybe that's all. Oh, okay, we need to mark this checkbox. Uh, okay, so uh, now after after that, we need to go to this uh, properties section, scroll to the bottom, and there is a uh, such option like we can enable static web hosting here. So we can go here, yeah, click enable. Then we need to specify some uh, basic um, configuration. Yeah, for now we will leave this redirection rule as empty and click save. Uh, yeah, and at the end, as a result of uh, this, uh, uh, changes, yeah, now we have, uh, again, some public uh, domain name, yeah, or URL. And if we open it, yeah, as we can see, it says it's uh, access forbidden. Actually, uh, what do we need to do? Uh, we also need to uh, update uh, the configuration of this uh, bucket, yeah, and provide some policy rules. Uh, in, my, uh, in my example, I already have, uh, such bucket, yeah. And if we go here, so as we can see, uh, yeah, there is a such configuration. It's more, it's more related to maybe AWS. Uh, uh, I don't know how uh, AWS uh, manages this part, but anyway, yeah. Uh, in general, we just need to, to allow uh, all operation get objects. Uh, on, on, on this uh, bucket and that's all, yeah. And uh, at the end, at the end, uh, yeah, if I go and open it, I also see that this, uh, uh, yeah, so it also should work as you can see, yeah. Uh, those still, I don't know, uh, works not very uh, fast. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, and the last step, what do we need to do from our, uh, uh, our local machine, from our CICD process, everything that we need to do, we need to build our 
application, yeah. And we need to execute command that would push uh, these uh, uh, changes to, to uh, our uh, bucket. Um, I believe also, also very simple, right? So create a bucket, make some, um, update some configuration, uh, push our changes uh, into it. And uh, why it's so popular uh, for now, especially for uh, single page applications or maybe for some static uh, sites, right? So, so sites that uh, uh, have only some static files because from out of the box, uh, such cloud providers, they, uh, they allow you to uh, turn uh, on uh, such things like uh, CDN, yeah? And uh, your, uh, like with several clicks, your application could be even more reliable, yeah? And uh, clients can be mm, fetched uh, this application uh, uh, more, more efficient and maybe it will be loaded more faster. So uh, how we can do this also very simple. Yeah, in AWS it's cloud front. We need to create uh, a distribution. In my case, I already have it. Yeah. And after that, uh, we need to specify some uh, uh, configuration for it. So we need to provide a region. Uh, basically it's like a source, yeah. Uh, from which uh, place uh, this uh, uh, CDN server, yeah will get our sources and will distribute it into it's it's it, the main idea of this CDN I believe also you, you should know that uh, we replicate uh, sources of these files uh, through uh, different machines uh, around the world yeah and in this case such uh, in this case uh, your request can be handled uh, by the nearest uh, I don't know uh, place to your uh, yeah, but uh, maybe I will not show uh, yeah maybe details, but in general, uh, yeah, everything that we need, we just need to go here, create a new region, uh, maybe uh, edit some configuration, and that's all. And as a result, yeah, we, we will have uh, yeah this uh, also the main name, right? and if I open it, yeah. It uh, also returns me, uh, yeah, uh, our single page application. Yeah, and as we can see, also, I actually I don't know why it works in that way. Yeah, uh, in this case, uh, also, yeah, each time, yeah, uh, maybe it's downside of this approach. Each time you need to hard code your uh, values, yeah, and in comparing with. Uh, um, uh, with Docker approach, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you 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 need to have uh, exact uh, maybe version of your bundle. It said I don't know if it's, it's downside. I don't think it's downside, but actually also like uh, one advantage of this approach, uh, uh, it's uh, it provides out of the box also an HTTPS connection, right? So you even don't need to think about. Uh, uh, how to configure a SSL, etc. Um, yeah. So also maybe I believe with this approach uh, is this all from what I uh, could see. Yeah, the most common approach now. Of course, it depends on the teams, on development process, yeah, on uh, requirements, etc. But uh, for now, it's commonly used uh, this uh, S3. Uh, or maybe a blob storage uh, as a, um, an option, yeah. Uh, because why? Because uh, it's very cheap, yeah. Uh, I would say not very cheap, but uh, the storage is cheap, yeah. And we don't need to think about uh, any kind of operation, etc. And yeah, and it's very easy to even uh, uh, turn on this cloud front uh, or CDN service on top of it. Uh, yeah, so as he said, when it can be used, uh, when you have some reliability requirements, yeah, easy to turn CDN. Uh, all, already use heavily used some cloud provider, yeah, and uh, I don't know, 
or maybe I know if you is a separate software engineer for your own purposes and you don't have uh, ops, ops knowledge, right? As I said, and uh, as a downside, I know also maybe because actually I I don't have an answer on it. But how uh, this canary or blue green deployment uh, can be applied? Um, actually, I have an answer. So maybe it should be done on maybe on another level, on network level, or maybe when we configure our uh, domain name, etc. Yeah, but in terms of uh, this one, I don't know. But maybe like I don't know is it? And uh, what's next? So maybe this last one that I would like to highlight. So uh, here I didn't cover uh, such topic like uh, HTTPS, how we can uh, configure uh, maybe some HTTPS connection, how uh, the cell certificates can be uh, installed. Yeah, but I believe it's also okay. It I think it's also as a front engineer, you also need to know how to do this, on, even on the high level. Yeah, and uh, uh, what about ser server side rendering? I think uh, it's also if we, if you know uh, the basic idea, yeah, then uh, it's also some maybe details how you can uh, connect, yeah, and how you can uh, configure uh, this um, an another part, yeah, with some runtime process that would returns uh, instead of uh, static files some. Uh, HTML, yeah, based on your logic. Uh, of course, uh, also what I maybe, if you don't uh, know uh, what, uh, uh, how to, how uh, DNS, uh, what is uh, DNS records, how it works, uh, I, have, I ha highly recommend it at least to check it. What uh, does it mean? Uh, a records, name record, a mix, uh, txt record, yeah. And also would be very uh, useful to check uh, uh, at least how to use such uh, tools like D quiz and SLOOKUP. So it will uh, yeah, allow us uh, to, uh, to very easily, I don't know, troubleshoot or debug uh, some potential I don't know, use cases, et cetera, if you have. If you know, super, yeah, it's very uh, good. And uh, the last one maybe, um, what if you, just uh, uh, build your uh, Angular React view application, yeah? And you know, you would like maybe to gain more knowledge uh, with, uh, I don't know how cloud cloud, uh, cloud uh, provide the floor, work, et cetera. Yeah, uh, please check uh, maybe it's a such topic like cloud native application or maybe it's a good, uh, yeah, and maybe, uh, it's a good option to start with some basic uh, certifications. Yeah, for example, AWS uh, they has uh, this uh, cloud practitioner. As I remember, yeah, it calls it that way. So if you just uh, even uh, watch uh, that videos on YouTube, or maybe you will uh, prepare for uh, exam, yeah, you will cover a lot of. Uh, such topics that we discussed here. And in general, yeah, I believe it's very also for now, very important knowledge also for especially front-end engineers, yeah. And uh, I believe from my side, it's all for today, yeah.